I've seen some uh, YouTube footage of you soloing. You were just blazing these ridiculously clean, fast, defined licks. How do you work up to that? How do you achieve perfection of just because I'm I'm more I'm I'm an old school guy. Mm -hmm. I, Van, Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes are my two biggest influences. And I'm not a shredder, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, a lot of my solos are written in pieces. Sure. A lot of melody and, and things you could almost sing, you know. Yeah, which is important, though. It I is. Like, it's important. I like how but you it, play because it's memorable. Hopefully, yeah. it is, and, yeah. and I appreciate that. But I, but also, I've always wanted to shred too. Yeah, I I think it, there needs to be a, for me, there needs to be a balance if yeah. you're going to shred. The shredding is usually in between. You yeah. know, you can play a melody and then kind of embellish it. Right, exactly. I don't like solos where it's just nonstop shred yeah. all the time. But I do like those solos of the guys that, you know, throw in the melody and then just throw out a really fast lick. You yeah, know, guys well, like uh, John Sykes of old, you know, right. where he would just throw some crazy lick in and you're going, wow, I didn't know he could do that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Show me what you do and then maybe I could take this with me and I can apply next time we get together in a couple of years to do this again. I'll, uh, I'll show you how I, I work myself up to okay. shredding. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, you know, what I'll often do is I'll take a, um, a part of an existing tune yep. and try to do variations on it. So you can take a lick, say, um, I, w I wouldn't play this because it's so Van Halen, but I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah, right, yeah, but that yeah. next part. That's very clearly Van Halen, yeah. this part. Yeah. Right, just that next part. Yeah. Right, so yeah. right there, there's a thing that... Or what is that? This is just going so up a scale. A lot of hammering, notes. right? Right. So it's just four notes. Yeah. So I'm not doing the whole thing right, right, right. now, but... It's just four notes. And just be able to play that clean. Yeah. And also so picking in too. Yeah, and I'm not picking every note. I could pick if I want to pick up. Yeah. Right. So these are variations. I might try it just picking the first and the last notes. Yeah. I might pick every note. But I'll play it slow and sort of work my way up to it. Right. Right. This is over time. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. Compressed. You start slow, then you work your way up to. Yeah, and then double the tempo, maybe. There we go. Triplets. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll move it around the scale. So, in this case, the scale is. Uh, It's almost like you can think of a phrase, right. a verbal phrase. Follow the elevator road. Right? Right. Now you can tell people what you're doing, and what scale it is, and what notes they are. Now I've heard, I've never met Eddie personally. Oh. I've heard that he can't tell you what he's playing. It's really genius level right, playing, right. Yeah. considering the landscape. Nobody played like that. Yeah. He plays a lot of patterns across the strings. Right. Right, like... Or look at something like. Right, it's the same thing, or. Yeah, right, yeah, what is that? Yeah, it's yeah. just. Yeah. It's just the same thing. So I, I believe that. I and used at to, that time, it was not being done at all. Yeah. In that, in that way. And oh, his tone. Not. And his tone was so unique. Yeah, and I, I thought, oh, there's no way this guy doesn't know the scales and doesn't know the patterns, but yeah, you know, it's just, he's always going across. Right. Right, it's just. Yeah, yeah. He's obviously uh, made great use of just taking a pattern going across the strings and not really thinking about wow. it. Scale-wise, but something like this, I'm definitely thinking scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it all comes from that. 
right? Yep. So wow. it's just a matter of, you know, playing slow and working your way up to it. And guys like Van Halen, especially the, the early Van Halen stuff, are great to listen to. Uh, Randy Rhodes, like... Yeah. 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 Right. How cool is that? And you can... Uh, you don't have to just play those patterns. You could just take that and say, just go down the scale, right? right? Or do a, you know, do other scales. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, so variations. I always try to do variations. I'll take an existing lick I like and do variations. Slipknot, the band came out with a statement. We regret to inform you that we're parting ways with our longtime drummer, Joey Jordan. It's a great drummer, oh, yeah. by the way. Yeah. And then a few weeks later, or you know, whenever Joey comes out with his own statement, and he says, I did not quit the band. Right. Um, it was news to me that I wasn't Totally different, anymore. opposite in story. And th it's not just... Slipknot. I, mean, I, I think a similar thing happened uh, with Queensryche yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. And that, that got crazy. Yeah, but I, it, and then, we, then the list goes on. It, it just, um, from the beginning of time. Oh, yeah. Recently. Yeah. 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 Um, who you would think is sort of yeah. above all that. Slayer. Um, yeah. Dave Lombardo. Striper. You guys? Yeah. I thought you guys had the same lineup the whole time. Well, we have, but we were broke up for a long period of time because uh -huh. I left the band. I left the band in 92 uh -huh. because uh, I just felt like, you know, we had had our say and done right. our thing, and there were, there were too many internal issues mm -hmm. that I needed to break free from because it was starting to affect my family and me right, right. and how I was to my family, and my family was worth more to me more value to me than my band, so I, I left. Yeah, I sorry, said, band. I'm out of here. But yeah, I guess a qu one question to ponder is: Is there a right way to let someone go? You can certainly try to do it right. Mm -hmm. Whether in the person's mind that's being let go is ever going to see it that way, that's a different story. But as a band, there's a respectful way to do it. Yeah, and, and a nice way to do it. And does the person being let go have an obligation to yeah I mean behave in a certain way I or, think so yeah. because the thing that a lot of people forget that are in bands is they're in the public eye mm -hmm. and with that comes some sort of accountability and I think you are kind of letting the fans down you know if it gets real nasty if you do it in a way where it's respectful and you're just you're just talking and voicing your opinion and uh, saying you know like I saw Dave Mustaine talking with the guys in Metallica, just saying, well, you guys hurt me, you know? That's different. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. talking it out. A lot of history there. A lot yeah. of history there, and that's a totally different story. They needed to talk it out. They clearly. needed to. I, I think anytime um, it happens, anytime there's a, a parting, the, the, band's, the band and the, the guy should do their best to just keep things cool. Couldn't agree talk, more. Or, or talk in person, phone calls. Yeah. It's sad, man. It's sad sometimes. And then there are the, you know, there are those bands that do it right. Yeah. And you got to respect that, you know. Yeah, I thought um, Judas Priest. Yeah, handled me too. Pretty well. Me too. Now I don't they know. Didn't say much. KK I, didn't say much. No. Nope. But. Yeah, I think so too. I agree with you. And they're one of my all-time favorite bands. Yeah, and who knows what happened there? But yeah. not much was said, and I think it was better for everyone overall. And as a fan, I look at them and go, "Woo, awesome!" You yeah. know. Your guitar, I noticed it's an yes. ESP. This is my model. It is. Um, it is launching this year. Oh, wow. I've got some ESPs, just the stock. Here, take a look. Stock. Uh, so it's the uh, Les Paul, similar Les Paul yeah, style body. Yeah, it's based body. off the uh, Eclipse, but it's uh, thicker. Uh, it has the thickness of the classic instruments. It doesn't, you don't have to wrestle with it the way... Some of the, um, you know, like I really like guitars from the 60s and 70s. It's kind of in between. It's not 
you know, easy to play like right. one of those 80s Charvels. Right. But it's it's sort of in between. And a lot of the guitars, the vintage guitars, is kind of hit or miss. You find one that's amazing and one that's just, you know, I'm sure this is probably yeah. much more consistent, right? Yeah, because, you know, with um, awesome, man. a company like this, you're actually working with them hands-on. What is this set up to? Do you tune uh, 440? Right now, it's tuned to 440. Um, when I play with Testament, we tuned to 430. Yeah. What so about you guys? We're Van Halen, uh -huh. uh, half step down. Yeah. We've always That's been. But man, so these are these stock pickups or are these, uh, these they're ESP are or are they? Seymour Duncan pickups. They, okay, yeah. And um, these are also custom Seymour Duncans. And it's beautiful. Thank nice, you. Thank nice you. guitar. And this comes out this year. Comes out this year. It's a real simple, you didn't really have them do too much. So that says a lot for the company, right? That's got a lot of resonance. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So then when you get sound, you know it's going to sound. Yeah, you can hear it. It's just every note is defined. Yeah, it's got yeah, that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. Awesome. Right. Very cool, dude. Hey, man, so... Uh, yeah, this I, has I been great, by the way. Hey, likewise. Yeah. I could sit here and talk to you all day long. I, I, I had a question for you, and um, what, what's coming up for all things Alex? I'm actually working on an acoustic wow. album, Planetary Coalition, it's called. Okay. And I'm also writing riffs for a New Testament album. Uh, we just started writing riffs, sending them back and so forth. So you're just working on that, the, the upfront pre-production, so to speak, point of that album. Yeah, we're in the infantile okay. <laughs> stages yeah. at this point. Yeah, and then uh, you know, then we're looking to get in the studio and cool, man. Do the next album cycle. Good um, for you. Good yeah. for you. And uh, you guys. We we got a lot going on. Last year 13 was really crazy for us yeah. and we released uh, Second Coming which was a re-record album. We released No More Hell to Pay, which is an all-original album. First one with the original lineup since uh, 1991, sure. or 1990. And then uh, we recorded a live album. Right. That right. comes out next year. And then I, I, I did a solo album a year and a half ago. That's coming out May 6th. Oh, and a book, a book as well May 6th. Congrats, man. That's all great stuff. It's been a pleasure, brother. And Likewise. You know, we're from honor, di different it, it, worlds, different areas of metal, but but that's the I've beauty always of respected this. We're, you we're, we're two we're, human beings, yep. and, you know, we, we, we love music. And we have some, a lot of common ground. Absolutely. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. It's all about the music. All right, dude. All right, bro.